doesn't need to work. So one day he was coming back from the hunting, an old man stopped him. And he told him, Ali hada khulit, am bihada umirit. He said, Is this that you were is this what you you were you were created for? Or is this what you have been ordered to do in your life? Allah created you to do this, just to go hunting and come back. And how many people you see in your life? I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the Muslims, I'm talking about Muslims. Muslims! They go to work, they come home, they eat, they watch TV, they drink and they sleep. I'm not hurting anybody. I am so good to people, I am so nice to people, I am not talking too much about people, I, you know, I, I am so, so good about everything except that. But this brothers and sisters, being a heedless, it is dangerous in a way that how are you going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, you're not hurting people, but you're hurting yourself, you're hurting your family. Your family are looking upon you and they say, look what he's doing, and they're going to do the same thing you do. And what kind of generation are you going to have after that? Another thing that would ruin the heart of people, is the false love. You know, you love something that you cannot get. A man loving a wife, or, you know, a, 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 a girl or a girl loving a, a man. Or something that you cannot get. There's something in your hand. It's a false love. Anyone, anyone it is. Doesn't matter what kind of love. That will ruin your heart. Why? Because you never get that. And then you start blaming others for things that is not happening. And then what happened to your heart? Become weak and weak. يقول ابن قيم رضي الله عنه رحمه الله يقول العشق خمر الروح. He said love is the wine of the soul. You keep loving and loving. Remember the, the story of Qais and Layla. Qais and Layla, this man who never married to Layla. And he died and she died without marrying, marrying each other. And his father was so concerned about him, he lost his money. So he said, let's take him to Hajj. Well, they were poor Islam, but they used to have Hajj. So he took him to the Hajj so he would let, you know, have some rituality. So he started going around, you know, and making the bawaf and all of that. And then someone was shouting for his wife or somebody, her name Layla. And then he heard the name and he said, Layla. And he started giving poetry and poem about Layla. As if he said, I'm looking at the Kaaba and I see Layla. Layla is the Kaaba for me. Or oh, the Kaaba is Layla. This kind of love. And he died. Thinking about that. That's why Yaqul, he said, this kind of love is the wine of the soul. You skiruha, it will become drunk. It will block it from understanding and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa adam al billahi wa salah. That people will be heedless about that. Number three, desires and dreams. You know, daydreams. You know what? Like this man, he is poor and he found one time an egg. And he said, You know what? This egg, I will take it and I will raise it to become a chick and then I will find a rooster. And then we will get more eggs, and we will have this, and we have that. And he was getting in his hand, taking all that, and then he trapped. What happened to the egg? Broke. What happened to all his dreams? It's gone. So when you say, Ahi, what are you doing? I am getting my million dollars, inshallah. I'm working and getting that million dollars. When are you going to get that million dollars? When I'm getting that million dollars, I will do. When I get this, I will do. When I will get this, I will do that. You are riding the desires, the false, false desires of your heart. It's not there. You don't have anything. And you're just making imagination. That's why our Salaam always said like that you need to talk about reality. And as I said today in the khutbah, you know, you can be swimming up there in the, uh, between the clouds and all that. But when you come down to earth, this is the reality of the matter. The are the challenges that you have every day. That's what you have to deal with. Number four, the bad companionship. Rasulullah said, "Al-mar'u ala dini khalilah." 
He said, anyone is on the religion and deen of his partner or his friend. He didn't say, al maru ala deeni abi, al maru ala deeni akhi, al maru ala deeni umma, your mother, your father. You know, he said, your partner, your friend. Who is your friend? I will tell you who you are. So you better choose your friend wisely. I mean, we can expand on that, but I don't want to because, I mean, the time. And not only that, I mean, we, we all, I think, know all of this. I just try to put it you know, together in a way that we can understand, you know, the situation that we go through sometimes. And, and we always hear, you know, I'm talking to the young ones because, I mean, I have kids also. And, they, and your father also said, don't, don't go with this guy. I mean, he's not good or something. He said, Dad, what's wrong? He's cool? Yeah, but what, what do you mean he's cool? I mean, can you, can you define the word cool? He's all right. Can you define for me the word all right? What does that mean? You know, tell me more. Give me some more explanation so I can understand. Why do you have to understand that? I'm okay with him. See, we think we are so, very smart. We think we are very smart. But then, when things are going south and things are not working the way, the, the way we want it to be, you know, it's, sometimes it's too late. And so many friends have ruined other people's life because of the friendship. Number five, sins. You know, when, when someone commits a sin, the shaitan comes in and tells you, <laughs> no, I don't think you can make it still far. You make Toba. It's too late now. So keep going. But the Prophet told us, when you, once you do a bad deed, immediately do something good. Men will go, how? I'm cheating Allah. No, you're not cheating Allah. Allah knows about you. He knows what you're doing. You know when you say, some people say, I cheat Allah, but Allah doesn't know Allah about you. He knows about you. He knows what you're doing. He knows that you did all these sins. So that's why you say, Allah, I'm repenting to you. But what about I go back again? Repent again. And repent again. And repent again. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to really, you know, give you a strong heart. So you will stop committing sins. We cannot. I mean, you know, sometimes we commit sins. But then, al is the, is the key to your heart and forgiveness. Number six, the nonsense talk. The haram, listening to the haram. And I'm not talking about listening to Hamid again. I'm going to get to the, the arena of listening to music and not listening to music. I want to make it easy for you, listening to anything haram. One of the great ones that Prophet have talked about is listening to backbiting. Backbiting. Prophet was passing by one of the graves and he saw putting, you know, some green, you know, trees and this and that. And they asked him, oh Allah, why are you doing that? He said, Inna yu'addaban. Those are two Muslims, but they didn't, are, are being yu'addaban, tortured. They've been hit in the grave. What do they do? The first one, He never cleaned himself after he goes to the bathroom. And I, 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 I wonder sometimes, let's see, people go to the urine. And I'm sorry to say that, but you know, uh, they go and they use the urine and then they leave. And I say, well, how did you clean yourself? How did you clean yourself? And I talk to the youth. I mean, I'm so involved, alhamdulillah, with the youth in Dallas. And I told, I told them, how do you clean yourself? And I, unfortunately, I see even adults doing that. The parents, the fathers. How can you go and pray and make wudu and, and there is najasa in your clothes? That's another subject. The other one, he said, he used to walk between people and backbite and start a fight between people. You know what he said about you? Uh, you know,